Hi everyone, this is my third take on describing what it's like being a scattered person in a very linear world. Um, I think it's overwhelming, it's sad at times, it's you feel like you're a fake, you know, have imposter syndrome, you wonder if this is the authentic you, you wonder if this is the right path, you question a lot of things and you sometimes feel like you're not living your own life you're living more for other people and the pressures that they give you to be linear when you're just scattered like i understand that when i was in school i excelled because of the structure um there was this article on women with adhd you know highly intelligent women with adhd saying that they sometimes get called fake or people don't believe that they have attention problems or their attention is different because they are um, doing well academically they're successful and so there's this like inner shame of how how do I have to prove that I have um, differences like how much do I have to um, reach rock bottom for you to believe me you know and I think that's kind of the case right now for a lot of women who are trying to speak up about being autistic and that's it's a lot of heartbreak for me to see that process because there's so much overlap and a lot of questions, you know, the sensory um, processing differences, the being overwhelmed, the stereotypes that autistic people don't have empathy. That's a big one. I remember when I was in my grad program, one of the last things I wrote about was about seeing autistic people in a different light and that was that they do have heightened empathy it's not um, a deficit they actually have too much um, and they get overwhelmed because they feel so much and that must be still um, novel information because a lot of people who actually practice believe that autistic people do not have empathy and that for me is kind of like dehumanizing and seeing autistic people in a lesser light which is a terrible feeling too. So like, there's like these layers of emotion and, and, and questions and new information coming out, people speaking up and wondering what is the textbook definition of this and that? What does it mean to be a differently presenting person when the professionals label these symptoms or these descriptions as having ADHD or as having autism so it's very fascinating right now in the therapist world for those who are um, advocating and supporting the neurodiverse population um, it's fascinating for neurodiverse therapists and professionals to come out and share their experiences and um, to see the the bias and the ableism that goes on for invisible things like chronic pain um, chronic illnesses, you know, the the way people think that you can't see and the masking. The masking is the part that's so huge for me. Um, you can say it's from, for different reasons, you know, you mask. And for different people who understand that term and the depth of that, um, the turmoil that is involved with masking to survive, I, it's so hard to explain. It's so hard to explain the masking part, but that's the part that gets to me where you live, again, for other people. And sooner or later, when you find people like you or accept you, they don't even have to be exactly like you, but they believe you. They believe you. You know, I believe you. And it is like the biggest weight off your shoulders and your chest to feel like you're not a liar or to be deemed a liar when you say something because you don't look, quote unquote, um, disabled. You don't look like you're in pain. You don't look like you think differently. You're just kind of weird, right? Um, all these things come to mind where you're masking and you're hiding true parts of who you are because you never felt safe to show completely who you are. And so you feel like there's this kind of complete opposite persona in real life compared to who you really, really are, but can't seem to give space to thrive because of all the stigmas and the shame and the making fun of 
and and being called a fake and a liar it's just a lot to deal with and so I do feel like it becomes where you become separate people you become after a while you have to become these different people but it, it's so extreme for certain people like I get we all wear masks and I know other people might say like we all wear masks that's just not the point but for those who are treated in such a way where they can't even express who they really are like the jabs and the making fun of it, it adds up and it builds up so much that you withdraw and you just lose a sense of who you are you lose a part of you like a part of you dies or becomes dormant for so long it's just it's such a heavy burden and heavy feeling to want to be accepted because we are people right we're social animals we want at least some type of community and so you have to figure out which part of me is is okay and acceptable uh, according to outside standards and it's 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 just so much to deal with and so I'm just blurbing right now or blah whatever but like I think belonging to the neurodiverse um, affirmative therapist group on Facebook has really helped me a lot I'm still learning more about it but all these new articles and seeing women come out um, showing that this is another face of autism, this is another face of ADHD, this is another face of neurodiversity. And it is not just, you know, I get that there's this um, privilege of passing too. So that's another layer of what is going on that you look a certain way or you have all these layers of privilege. And so people only see the privilege. They only see the parts that they want to see, not the suffering that, that would, you know, make it, difficult to make fun of you or, or resent you for things in life and so um it is, is is very complicated but i needed to share this is my third take i'm hoping that this is going to be it um but yeah it would be nice to have more compassion and um whatever i find out i will share you know i'm starting to write more blogs on um twice exceptional giftedness giftedness um executive functioning because for me it has always been something uh, that I wanted to explore and work on. It's just didn't have the terminology, didn't have the right connections and people. But now that I've been online so much and people have seen what I'm um, interested in, I am so lucky, so gifted to have people to share resources, information, to direct me on what makes my heart happy. So I look forward to sharing more information and reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.